Okay, um, back to this spreadsheet exercise. Just want to quickly show you how to do this. We we made some headway in class that one day, um, but <coughs> I think <coughs> this is what you can pull down off of Canvas. Has the raw data in here and tells you what plots go with which. Um, there's also a Word document that tells you what you're trying to do, which is basically do two different t-tests. You want to compare the average abundance of beetles among kudzu infested and non-kudzu infested sites, and also the species richness, which is two different things. Abund abundance is if you find a beetle, it counts as one beetle. doesn't matter what species it is. A, a richness basically means that it's a count of how many different species there were so you could find a thousand individual beetles but they're all the one same species um, so that uh, is what the difference between richness and abundance is okay so I think the second worksheet shows you kind of the the table that you're ultimately trying to get to this is just an example we have enough plots one through six down the side then we have our abundance, so these 23 different beetles were found in plot 1, and there were only two different species in those 23 uh, individuals. Here on plot 6, there were 48 species, but there were 10, uh, 48 individual beetles and 10 different species. Okay, And I'll show you how to do this later, but this just kind of shows you what the table will look like. So we're going to go back to here. We're going to highlight our, it doesn't really matter the date for this analysis, so we're not even going to put it in here. We're going to highlight the genus and the plot. Damn it. We are going to go highlight these. We are going to insert to the table, put it on a new worksheet. I'm going to go over here and again the plot went down the row side one through six right and then the columns the columns were just the plot and then the count of abundance so we're not going to really put anything in the columns we're going to put well let's see if you do you'll see what happens as it lists all those genera across the top but if we put that genus down in the values, what it does, it, it gives us a count of how many um, of each genus was found. Well, a total count of every time a give, any genus occurred in a given plot, it gives us a 1. So that means that there were 39 different beetles, 103 different beetles, 96 different beetles ca captured in each of these plots. So we can quickly check this, 392, does that make sense? If we go back here and we scroll to the bottom, then we know this should be there should be 392. Yep, oh, 393, but what's that top row is our label. So 392 is correct. So that ends up being the table for... Uh, total abundance okay so just keep that and then I would relabel this sheet just so you can keep track all right we're going to call this abundance and then we're going to go back and we're going to make the table for richness so a little bit more uh, complicated same basic premise we're going to insert a pivot table <laughs> Put it on a new worksheet. Well, I can relabel this. We can call this um, richness. If that goes away, it's no problem. Just click on the table again. Now what we want to do is put the same plots down the rows. We're going to put the genera across the top. And in the values, we want a count of those genera. So in other words, what you're seeing here is there were three different times the uh, gen the genus Apenis occurred in plot one, ten different times the 
genus Calosoma, occurred in plot four, and so on and so forth. So this, again, it should come out to 392, which it does, a grand total for all the genera and all the plots, or all the plots, I should say, it's 392. So that, that makes sense. Now, what we need to, but for this analysis, it doesn't really matter whether or not you found one zoophium or 14 zoophium. It, it counts as that, gen, that genus was recorded for that plot. So what we need to do, we're going to copy all the way across. You don't need the total or any of that stuff. Just copy across, control C or right click copy. Um, I'm just going to put it down below here. You can put it on a new worksheet, whatever's less confusing. Right, right click, do paste values. Okay, and it gets rid of all the magic of the pivot table. So these are just static numbers. If I click on here, then I'm inside of the pivot table and I can't really do anything with these values. When you place values, you can actually manipulate these values. So now what we have, what we need to do ultimately is to get this change so that if there's a blank, we can put a, well, we don't need to put anything if there's a blank. If there's a number in here, we just need to change all these numbers to ones. Okay. Because, okay, let's just look at this plot one. What is the genus richness? We have Apenes is one, Calisoma two, Calibi three, Cincidella four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So there are 14 different genera captured in plot one. So what we want to do is basically watch this. If I take all of, I highlight all the numbers inside of the table. I do control F, control F is to find. What I want to do is find any number and replace it with one. So the wildcard character here is do you do control Watch the little, oh yeah, control eight, this little asterisk. Control eight says, all right, computer, find any value, any text, any character. And what do we want to replace it with? We want to replace it with one. Now watch, just watch um, over here, say in Cincidella. And let's look at Cincidella and Carabas. We're going to hit replace all, boom. Now what did it do? All, any place there was a number, it got ones. And for Kravis, it got ones. All right. So basically, now we only have ones and blanks. Okay. So we said every time there's a given number that gets a count as a genus being found in that plot. So really, at the end of the day, all we need to do is go to the end here. We're going to say, call this richness. And what we want to do is to say that this equals the sum of all of these. Okay, and it's going to count up all the ones that are in there. I.e., it's going to count up all the different genera. Right? There's 15. So I think maybe we were off by one. One, two, well, I know that the computer doesn't lie. They always get this addition right, unless it counted the plot number. Let's go out here and check. You can check to make sure you did this right. Click on this, and it will say it'll show you what it was counting. Yeah, see, that's exactly what happened. We don't want this one. I can just shift this over. So it's actually 14, which is what we got originally. Now just copy this down to the bottom, and there's your general richness. Okay, so we're getting close to our table. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to copy all this. Copy. I'm going to go over to my t-test here. I'm going to paste the values, and then I'm going to I'm going to delete all this stuff in the middle.
shift cells left yeah there we go that's what we wanted to do was our plot one through six and our richness all the way down okay our abundance we got our plot and we got our richness copy this paste it over there all right so here's our numbers and you again you want to label these so you don't lose track of what's what which would make sense abundance would always be more because unless it just happens that you caught one of 14 different species there's multiple individuals of each species so this should be more okay so we got our our table okay now let me show you how to actually use the so I, i'm going to delete these i know it sounds stupid but uh, i don't want to show you the answer to everything let's just pretend that those are the numbers we just got plot and again one two three this is the plots that have kudzu and four five and six are the plots that don't have kudzu and what we want to do is use a t-test to compare the average of these three numbers to see if the average is different than the average of these three numbers that's what a t-test does okay so we're going to I'm just going to do abundance first, richness, and we're going to do, remember what you do when you want to tell the computer you're doing a, um, any type of um, formula is you start with the equals, okay, and we're going to do equals t, t dot test, yep, parentheses, we want the first set of numbers, comma, second set of numbers, comma, and we're going to do two tails and a two sample test. So just do two, two. Just trust me on that. I don't really have the energy to explain it to you, and you don't really care anyway. So hit the enter. We're going to do the same for richness. Do equals t dot test parentheses first array of numbers comma second array of numbers comma two two and parentheses there are your values for your p values okay your p value you're looking for a low p value the p value is the probability that when you say there's a difference that you're wrong i think of p value as you sort of like your probability of crying wolf and what did the little boy that cried wolf why it was his great mistake was that he said the wolf was coming when it really wasn't if you said that there's a difference between the two there's a chance that there's not really a difference because we're just taking a sample here we don't really know we don't have a count of every single beetle and every kudzu infested place and all the beetles from non-kudzu invested place we're taking a sample and then we're making an inference right to see if there's a difference we have to make a judgment call though okay and there's a possibility of being wrong saying there's a difference and that the, that there isn't actually a difference that's what this probability is so what this tells us is if we said there's a difference we're going to be wrong uh seven and ten thousand times so 99 point nine 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 percent confidence in making that call which i'm comfortable with that generally we use a p-value of less than 0 0.05 0 0.05 so that's to say we are comfortable five percent of the time crying wolf we're f comfortable five percent of the time saying that there's a difference when there's not actually a difference okay and since this is way lower than um, 0 0.05 then we can clearly say that there's a difference in beetle abundance and beetle richness between um, between kudzu and non-kudzu areas <clears throat> show you this because and, and i'll fill out the um form uh there is a microsoft word document there um in the same module so send me your spreadsheet that has your p-values not these p-values because again this is just made up data but the p-values for um, the beetle data and if there's any questions on that word document and then upload them in the assignment called 
uh, spreadsheet exercise. Okay. Um, do that by next Friday, which is November. Sixth. Okay. And now keep in mind now, why am I making you do this? Because I'm hoping some of you guys will generate some data and you, um, if you do have data, and you really want to knock it out of the park and get a solid A, you should be using some kind of statistic to analyze your data. Maybe you have average time it takes for a turtle to flip over, or you have an average number of um, peanuts left in a thing, or average, this t-test is how you uh, would test to see if those averages are different or not. So it's a very good skill to know, and it's good to know how to use Excel. So. All right, folks, thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you soon.